no, no, it, it, is, it is open for everyone, but uh, definitely I would like our media friends also to ask questions in addition to the audience. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Jain, please. Yeah, please, please go ahead. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, may I request on the status of programs like IAC2, LPT, Project 75I, for example, uh, in also in view of uh, the kind of push being made by the government by Prime Minister himself about make in India. How longer are they going to take and they are going to get concluded? Because they have been there for some time and we are we have been hearing one step, then second step, then third step. Also, if I may refer to your uh, point, uh, Admiral Deshpande, you spoke about you are kind of looking forward to the ease of business rules. Can you elaborate on that? Thank you. Uh, thanks for this question. Uh, in so far as how long all these things would take, probably your guess is as good as mine. Uh, but uh, we have had some progress. Uh, if you look at the LPD program, uh, we have been stuck with this program for a good five, six years. And today we are in a situation where uh, uh, we have a way ahead. Uh, wherein uh, decisions have been taken at the highest level in the ministry that we need this uh, project and I can uh, pretty confidently say that by the end of the year uh, we should be able to sign the contract for the LPD. Yeah. We have a way ahead. You spoke about LPD. LPD. Oh, okay. So we have a way ahead and uh, the way ahead is being uh, put into place right now and uh, very shortly as I said, we would be interacting with the people who've uh, quoted for this. And by the end of the year, keeping my fingers crossed, I should be able to sign this contract. Uh, in terms of the IAC2, uh, lots of discussions are right now within the Navy on what type of an IAC2 we want, wherein uh, right from the tonnage, uh, the type of propulsion, uh, we are debating on this. And uh, once this debate is more or less uh, Within the Navy, we are clear on exactly what we want. We would take up this case uh, with the Ministry for getting the approvals. Uh, right now, the bit of a question mark uh, from the Ministry side, because we've taken this up uh, with the Ministry on a few occasions, uh, it's a huge ticket item. And uh, before some commitments are made uh, on allocation of these funds, I think everybody wants to be very clear uh, on the requirement. Uh, we we actually need that. So these are being addressed uh, by the time we actually take it up to the government for final clearances. But uh, there's a lot of positivity, uh, positivity uh, both from the government side as well as from the Navy. And I'm sure that uh, maybe in the next two to three months, we should be in a position to take it up to the ministry to get the, mon to get the funds. Because as I said, it's a very big ticket item. It will have to be at the expense of things. And we need to take these calls of how we could go about doing it. Uh, the other thing you talked about, the other, the third one, LPD, the IAC and uh, 75, 75, 75 India. Eyes. 75 India is again one of those things which have been going on for quite some time. And the 75 India program was linked with the strategic partnership model. Uh, we had some fair amount of progress on the strategic pro uh, partnership model. Uh, but as things have changed, uh, we have to rework on these. And uh, once uh, that happens, we should be able to go through. Uh, but what we are looking at is that uh, we need those submarines badly uh, because our force levels are being affected. And in case the strategic partnership model doesn't fall into place for whatever reasons, then we'll have to look elsewhere. Uh, we must have cash. We can restrict. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll give uh, you a chance, Mr. Jain. Right. Uh, thanks okay, for your okay. question. You can ask the question so, later on. Okay. Business have, environment. Your last question. I have Manu. Yeah, your last question on business uh, environments getting bettered. Uh, I'm sure that uh, once uh, we look at self-reliance as the motive in all our projects, uh, there would be 
positive steps from the government in terms of uh, probably some taxation structures or such like. Uh, currently, I would say that only two things which have happened uh, and one is that the foreign direct in investment uh, limits have been raised and uh, if the strategic mo uh, model actually falls into place, then uh, the industry has the option of tying up uh, with people both in country and out country and come up as uh, a very uh, potent manufacturing entity. And if I have to look at it that um, if I have to place an order, more the merrier for me, I get competition, I get a better product. So if this falls into place, uh, it has its uh, pitfalls and limitations, but once it falls into place, I think it will be a win-win for everybody. Thank you very much, uh, Admiral Deshpande. I have uh, Manu from the from the far end. Please ask him the question. Ajay, after that. Uh, so this, this is Manu Pavi from the Economic Times here. Uh, so two questions. So one is, uh, you know, repeated uh, reports in the parliamentary committee have talked about a pressing uh, need for minesweepers. And as we know, something is on with the Goa shipyard currently. But despite, you know, it being on for a while, we've not seen any progress on it. Can you update us on the project? And second is, uh, can you clarify on your remarks that if the strategic partnership model is delayed, uh, submarines are badly needed and you will be looking at other options. What do these options include? Do they include an extension of the Scorpion line or are you looking at a purchase from abroad, a direct purchase from abroad? So, thank you so much. Uh, thanks Manu. Uh, on the minesweepers, uh, uh, as you are all aware that this minesweeper contract was supposed to go in between Goa shipyard and a uh, Korean uh, collaborator. Uh, we had issues. Uh, different types of issues and over the years uh, it was slightly uh, behind schedule uh, but today we are in a position where uh, we have passed that hurdle and here again uh, I would like to elaborate exactly where we stand uh, but I am reasonably confident that uh, again by the fourth quarter of this year uh, we should definitely be in a position to have pen to paper and so far as this uh, project is concerned. So things are moving, uh, they're moving as we speak and uh, as I said uh, in the fourth quarter I should be in a position to sign this contract. Uh, in so far as these options that you said about in case the SP model doesn't come in, uh, we have, uh, we've got to get more submarines and we're looking at the ways and means of how we can get this. Uh, it's still a work in progress in so far as decision making is concerned. Whether we go for a follow on of the Scorpion or whether we look at something else, whether we look at uh, G2G agreements with somebody, it's, stall it's still in discussion stages and uh, uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed that if, this if the strategic partnership happens, uh, we would be better off on that. But if that doesn't happen, all these options come to fore and uh, we will have to take a call to make sure that our conventional submarine forces uh, uh, sort of beefed up. Thank you, Admiral. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would request you to focus on the Indian Navy's future and the technology imperatives. Yes, Ajay, your question, please. Uh, Ajay Shukla from Business Standard. Uh, you've already, uh, during the, the answers to the last two questions, Admiral Deshpande, put several question marks over the strategic partners model if it comes through and uh, this is uh, this is sort of not surprising because the previous defense minister <laughs> himself i can recall on six different occasions promised it coming through in the next two months in the next two weeks the strategic partner model still remains in limbo if it does not come through what does this mean for the Indian Navy? Is it back to two years or three years in the past? Are you going to have to start afresh? How much of a drawback will this be? Uh, thanks, Ajay. I think uh, I've answered most of this in the last two questions, but uh, you're right. Uh, there has been a lot of imponderables expressed at uh, every stage by different people on whether the strategic model comes in or not. And today, uh, the projects that we are looking at through the strategic model is one is the submarine and then some is some aircrafts. So if it doesn't happen, uh, plan B will have to get into place and that plan B right now is something which is very internal to the Navy we are trying to discuss. But yes, uh, if this doesn't come through, there would be uh, some sort of a time penalties in making sure that uh, plan B gets into force. Thank you, Admiral. Uh, we have time for just two more questions. Yes, Commodore Rana. 
Yeah, I am Commander Dr. Rana here, part of the design team, designing aircraft carrier and principal director of indigenization before leaving the Navy. I have a small suggestion to make that uh, it's an excellent topic that you have chosen and a very wonderful program that has been uh, drafted. My only suggestion is that we need to also reach out to the academia, which is one of the important stakeholders in the whole development process in the self-reliance. And uh, we are talking about disruptive technologies. Those come from the academic institutions and the technology incubators which are there. So my small question is how are you intending to reach out to them? Because now army has become extremely aggressive. Over the last one year they have a lot of army outreach programs. They are taking people from the academia, startups and the industry to various operational uh, fields right from Tawang to Leh and Ladakh. Uh, so how are you going to be addressing and uh, as a curtain raiser how are you intending to reach out to the academia so that they, we have a better participation of the academia and technology incubators also in our uh, uh, seminar here. Okay, question regarding academic institution and technology incubator. To answer. Uh, when you're looking at uh, the academia coming in, uh, the academia actually gives us inputs through forums like this. Uh, we also have projects uh, which are run in the Navy, uh, which uh, basically get into play uh, institutions like IITs, uh, institutions like uh, some of the DPSUs who are into very basic research functions. And uh, we have certain outlays which have been kept for these developmental projects. And monies are, give, are set aside for developing these, uh, though this becomes the very first step in this entire issue. But uh, definitely uh, at every stage, uh, it is important for us that uh, uh, the academia gets in. Uh, IITs have also been got into it. Uh, there are uh, various programs of the foreign universities, uh, programs wherein the inputs are coming in from the academia towards uh, how we look at uh, getting in the academia to put in uh, a certain uh, viewpoints that they have uh, in the development of uh, the technologies that we are looking at. Thank you, Admiral. We can have a few more questions. Yes, Brigadier Atre. Commodore Sharma. Uh, one question. Uh, Brigadier Atre first. <laughs> uh, yeah, let, uh, me, let me have the question with Commodore Sharma. I'll come to you after that. All right, Please. right. Uh, Admiral Deshpande mentioned about three dimensions, mm -hmm. rightfully so, the surface, the aviation and the underneath. Perhaps Navy is the only service which has taken lead in the fourth dimension. I'm talking about space. Uh, uh, could this also be taken up in this seminar or maybe appropriate for the next year, next seminar? Perhaps you would like to give a few. We have, we have in this uh, program itself uh, two sessions dedicated to the space cyberspace and the space so it would get covered and uh, we'll see that we have appropriate participation in that as well yes uh, sir can you identify yourself uh, in the organization you can ask your question yeah uh, i'm brigadier atre from aviation and defense universe uh, this is an online news website <coughs> and we've been covering uh, navy extensively uh, my question is that uh, this particular seminar which has been designed is is covering all the aspects which are important as far as technological imperatives are concerned. But I think there is a need that before we take on this uh, complete seminar, there should be a, a paper read on the geopolitical situation which uh, forces us to go into these sort of uh, initiatives so that our Navy becomes more and more strong to take care of our adversaries. Thank you. Yeah, yeah please. Uh, no, you're right in the sense that uh, certain geopolitical constraints or what the environment is, but that is uh, as a given as far as we are concerned because when we are taking the decision on imbibing a certain type of a technology, uh, all these aspects are duly considered and when I say geopolitical I mean what your neighborhood is, what are the type of threat perceptions that are likely to come up from your neighbors and it's on based on this that uh, the decisions on our perspective plans are, it's based on this what sort of uh, an equipment and a weapon fit is uh, a sort of programmed into the platform that we are looking at. So definitely this does, uh, it forms a very major part uh, in so far as I very, as I told you right, uh, the first question uh, the decision to get an aircraft carrier, the second aircraft carrier. One of the important aspects about this is that 
the big question is do you need it and that do you need it gets answered by the geopolitical situation which is there yes uh, sir please identify yourself i'm dinakar peri with the hindu newspaper sir you mentioned about uh, again on the submarine question uh, apart from uh, apart from the conventional ones the government has sanctioned six ssns so where are we on that because they feel critical void in your submarine strength and in fact as a blue water navy that's what you require so where are we on that uh, i think uh, we can keep the questions to the theme which is there which is pertaining is to the technology perspective this is future navy sir okay okay i'll leave it to admiral uh, okay uh, i will not be able to answer on what is the program for the strategic project uh, but you are all aware that there is a strategic project which is on uh, where submarines are being built numbers capabilities are something which i will not be able to dwell on uh, but on the conventional also you are sure that uh, and you are aware what is uh, in store just make a distinction i'm talking about ssns not ssbns uh, yeah the, the entire gamut comes under the strategic perspective and uh, that is something which uh, i won't like to talk about uh, please restrict your question to the theme please yes sir uh, so it's been four months since the navy chief uh, gave us uh, displeasure over the uh, lca navy uh, that's being developed and he also mentioned that he was looking for a a uh, futuristic aircraft for the aircraft carrier can you give us a update on what has happened <laughs> uh you are aware that the lca program uh, has been a success story it's uh, but unfortunately the aircraft does not uh, suit uh, aircraft carrier operations and therefore uh what the navy said is that we would look at uh, a modified lca or lca star star which will get manufactured for aircraft carrier uh, operations uh, we have set out what exactly the lca should be capable of doing uh, what sort of uh, staff uh, requirements that the lca should be governed to at the time of manufacture uh, this would there have to be taken up uh, for manufacture but till such time that the lca program for the navy does not materialize we'll have to look at alternates So I'm actually as asking about alternatives, sir. Have you uh, looked in the at it's four months since? Uh, yeah, in the alternates uh, we have. Uh, it's uh, still in primary stages. We are looking at a case for 57 aircrafts, uh, which we are planning to induct. Uh, we will have to go through the processes of the RFI, look at other possible vendors, uh, work out uh, who can fit best. Uh, their solutions to what we have in mind so that's uh, in the pipeline uh, though as i said in the nascent stage right now thank you admiral uh, we can take uh, one last question from the diplomatic core or from the foreign oems over here anything that uh, you would like to know from admiral <coughs> okay uh, we come to end of this uh, media interaction and as well as the audience interaction as komodo sharma mentioned 